Okay, let's go into the area of, of uh, PCM resets and mobile, immobilizer resets and diagnostics on both of them. What I want to uh, cover here initially is the non-resettable type PCMs on a Toyota. Now you can see here, here's my listings of the Toyota vehicles that have the non-resettable PCMs. What that means is if the keys are lost on that vehicle, the PCM has to be replaced and it comes with two ready-to-go keys that must be cut at the dealership. So, you know, we'll cover this in a little bit of more detail a bit later on, but uh, you can see after model year 07, the non-resettable PCMs went away. Now, continuing on, if you take a look at the Toyota immobilizer systems, um, if you're just doing a pass-through, in other words, you're updating the, 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 the original PCM because of a TSB, when you do a reflash, a pass-through, well, as what we call on the original PCM, you don't have to worry about anything on a mobilizer reset. But if you replace the PCM on the resettable types, you're going to have to do a mobilizer reset. And when you do that, you've got to have both keys. But it doesn't make, it doesn't have to be a Toyota. It could be a GM. It could be a Ford, Chrysler, whatever the case may be. Anytime you have a theft deterrent problem, uh, other than the GM pass lock systems, you need both keys, as you'll see why coming up here shortly. What you're going to have to do is go key on engine off and take a paper clip, and at the 16 pin DLC, you're going to short pins 4 and 13 for 30 minutes to reset the mobilizer system in the event you replaced a resettable type Toyota PCM. Now, first of all, on the immobilizer system, your first diagnostic should begin with the security light. In other words, the light will turn on every two-tenths of a second, every two seconds. You know, the key's out of the ignition, the guy it's in his pocket, the guy's away from the car. If you monitor that security light, it's going to flash two-tenths of a second every two seconds. Now, when you put the key in there and you turn the key on, the light should go out. Now, these are the black booting keys. These are what we call the master keys. And I'm showing you where the light should go out, out when it recognizes the key. Now, what I'm trying to say is that if the security light is flashing, you stick the key in, you want key on engine off, the security light is either flashing or on hard, you have a theft deterrent problem. You have an immobilizer problem. Now, what Toyota does, it locks out the injectors and it locks out the ignition. It will still crank over, but there will be no there will be there will be no injector pulse, and there will be no spark. So the diagnostics here again, in summary, is babysit the security light. Now here you have if you have the gray sub the, what they call the gray sub keys, what they do they're what we call valet keys. They the valet key will not give you access to the trunk or the glove box. If you if the customer dropped off a gray booted sub key. When you turn the light on, you can see it's going to come on. The light, scary light will stay on for two seconds when it identifies that you're using a subkey. You can't do an immobilizer reset by using a subkey. You have to have the black booted master keys. If the security light is on or flashing, obviously you have an immobilizer problem. First thing you want to do, key on engine off, is the mill light on. If the mill light is not on, you need to check power of the PCM, and that's pretty that's a pretty good rule across the board on any make and model. If the light's flashing, obviously you've got a problem. Now, one of the things we see out there in the industry is these uh, mobilizer keys, there's a battery inside those. Those batteries go weak. Your scan tool will tell you that, but if you have both keys and one key's not recognized on the scan tool, this could be a just a little low battery voltage. It needs, a, obviously, a new battery in a key. So if one key works and the other key doesn't, obviously you've got a battery problem. So, you know, Toyota went to what they call smart key, which, you know, unlocks the doors, the trunk, you know, and starts the car up, uh, what they call a smart key. And whether or not you have the uh, smart key fee pop or the smart key on the ignition key, keep in mind, they're battery powered. Those batteries are known to go weak. So we're going to take the scan tool here and see if the scan data recognizes both keys, key number one and key number two. So you can see I'm just using one of the keys right now. So you can see I put the key, in, key on, I turn the ignition on, and you can see it went to on, and it recognizes that it was no low battery voltage off the battery in the key. That's just one example. Another example here is if you look at the data here on the digital readout, if you go down about midway down where it says key low battery voltage, notice it says no. Now, if it said yes, obviously you found your problem, just a weak battery in the case. So, you know, you got some pretty good scan data here to help you identify where the problem is.